What is going on, everybody? As most of you already know, my name is Chad. Today we're going to do a little mini review on the Elgato Game Capture HD. I'm not going to go into the specs of the device. That's all on their website. There's no point in me wasting time. I just want to talk to you about some real life experience, some stuff that I like about it, a thing or two that I really don't like about it. Because that's what people want to hear when they're making up their minds on, you know, what to spend their money on. So anyways, let's get right into it. Really, the only thing that I don't like about the capture card is that it captures in a file called M2TS, which is generally pretty friendly for most editors. Even in Sony Vegas, Sony Vegas accepts almost all forms of M2TS, except for the one that Elgato decided to use, which isn't a big deal, though, because it does give you the option to convert the M2TS into an MP4, which Sony Vegas loves. So it's not necessarily a problem. It just seems like it's kind of one added step that's unnecessary. But like I said, it will convert to MP4. It converts it to a different file. So you can go back after it's done converting, which by the way, takes minutes. And you can delete the file with all the raw gameplay. So it's not a big deal. The conversion doesn't affect quality or anything like that. It's still the raw gameplay. It's just a different file type. So that's really the only thing I don't like because I, like I said, it's sort of an unnecessary step. But other than that, I love the capture device, man. I was worried because Elgato's been handing out a lot of these for free to, you know, some of the bigger commentators, and in return, the bigger commentators kind of give them, you know, some positive, you know, positive promoting and stuff like that. So when that happens, you never know for sure if those particular commentators like the device or if they're just doing it because they're being compensated. But I can tell you that they do love the device, they're not saying it because they're being paid or being given stuff to say it. Uh, I really, like I said, I didn't find too many negatives about it. It has the HDMI in and out that I wanted, and in all honesty, most capture devices that are going to be made from here on out are going to be HDMI in and out because, you know, components kind of an old technology. I'm not sure if the PlayStation 3 has got past that copyright issue that they had with, you know, ripping raw gameplay off of the PS3 through HDMI. You weren't able to do it. I'm guessing you still can't. I don't know if the new PS4 or whatever they're going to call it is going to have that change or not. It's something for you guys to look into that have a PS3 because if that's the case you may need something that runs off a component as well. But for those of you that have an Xbox like me, this is the one I would recommend. It has the HDMI in and out like I said. Uh, the one issue, I guess there is one more issue. It doesn't have any optical, you know, in or out ports for sound on the actual device. It's not a problem, I guess, necessarily for me, because I have the adapter for the Xbox, and that's what I've always used. But if you're used to the HD PVR, it had an optical in and out, so, you know, you could hook your headset up to it, essentially. So that's a very minor problem, but like I said, for me, it wasn't because I already had the adapter. So keep that in mind. If you want to hook your headset up, uh, and use that as you're recording gameplay. You're not able to hook it straight into the Elgato. You do need the adapter for your Xbox or PlayStation 3 or, you know, whatever console that you happen to be using. Uh, the great thing is, I haven't been color correcting any of my videos the last, since I've got this essentially, the last couple weeks, and no one's really noticed. Basically because it captures and, you know, the color is beautiful. I don't need to color correct it. I haven't needed to correct the, the sharpness. I am rendering it a little higher setting, so that may make a difference, at least sharpness-wise, but as far as color goes, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't suck out any of the color out of the video. It's, you know, it looks perfect. Like I said, it may have something to do with the color settings that, you know, come as a default on the unit. I don't know, but I haven't felt the need to color correct anything, and everything's looked great. So that's a plus. The other plus is it's super small. It's I guess this it's about the size of a cell phone. It's a little bit thicker, but if you take two iPhones and put them on top of each other, that's about the size of it. It runs off of USB power, so there's no power cord. All that you have in it is the USB cord that goes to the computer, and then the HDMI in and out that's going to the monitor, or to the Xbox and to the monitor or TV, whatever you decide to use, so that's awesome. The other thing is there's no black lines. I don't know if you guys are familiar with how the old HTP VR captured, but it would leave a very thin black line on the top of the video and on the right side of the video, and it still drives me nuts to this day, but there's big commentators that are too lazy or too stupid to take those out of their videos, but the Elgato doesn't record those, so 
it's one less editing step that you have to take when you're using Sony Vegas, so that's awesome as well. The one thing I will say is that, you know, I obviously didn't compare it to the new Roxio that just came out or the HD PVR2 that just came out. Um, so I'm not saying that the Elgato is the best, I guess is what I want to tell you guys. The other ones you may like more. I'm just saying that this covers everything that I needed to cover and I feel like it was well worth $180. It has really great software. Uh, that's one thing I should mention too. The software actually enables you, if you forget to hit record, um, it enables you to go back and record gameplay. It actually, uh, it's almost like a DVR where you can rewind gameplay and then record something that you need. So that's cool if you forget, uh, you know, if you forget to record the gameplay. The one thing that really annoys me about it though is that if you have your Xbox on and you fire up the software, for whatever reason, it powers down and then powers up the Elgato again, so your Xbox restarts. So make sure that you open up the software program before you turn on your Xbox if you're going to capture gameplay. Otherwise, it's going to restart your Xbox and you're, you know, <laughs> it's slightly annoying, I guess, anyways. But uh, as far as video quality goes, I mean, you can see my videos are awesome. I've had a lot of positive feedback on my videos, a lot of messages saying, what are your render settings, you know, and all that stuff. And I am going to do an update video on that as well. But I'll tell you this, anything that captures an HD nowadays from HDMI is going to look similar. You may take, it may take a little more editing, but the final outcome is going to be pretty similar. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will be happy to answer them. And as always, I appreciate all the support. I will catch y'all later. Peace.